Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to do a Lori Vallow Chad Daybell update. So the first thing that I'm going to read to you is the statement made by Lori's sister, Summer. And of course, I want you to know what you guys think about this statement. I find it rather funny and contradicting of her interview that she had as opposed to the letter. So I'm going to read it and then I'm going to get into my thoughts. Words are hard and inadequate. Trying to hype through this pain is difficult. The last few months have been hard. The last week has been excruciating. Losing our precious Tylee and JJ in this horrific way is more than we can bear. I have a tremendous amount of gratitude to all of the law enforcement that have worked so hard to find Tylee and JJ. When I first heard that remains had been found, I immediately felt the need to pray for those who found them. And I continue to pray for those who were on the scene, removed the remains, and have to analyze them to try to piece together what these poor babies endured. I feel for those who do this work and I'm so grateful they are willing to do this to help bring peace and closure to families. I am also grateful to the Woodcocks for ordering the wellness check. I pray for them to have peace and comfort as well. My mother has been here with me the past few days and we both feel the same about this. I feel so incredibly grateful to all of our friends and family and even the strangers that have reached out to offer their love and support. I've learned on, I've leaned on them more than they know. We have prayed for the truth to come to light but we never thought it would look like this. Believe me when I say this has looked very different from my perspective than the, what the public has seen. It's so easy to jump on a bandwagon when you don't personally know all the people involved. When you've been up close and personal, you can't discount your own interactions and just go by what everyone else says and thinks. I know there are people waiting for me to admit I was wrong. If that's all you want to know, here it is. I was wrong. I'm an extremely imperfect person that loves my family with all my heart and I wanted to believe the best in them. And I held out hope for the best possible outcome. I have always said things truthfully as I understood them and I will continue to do that as I learn new information. While I'm nowhere close to perfect, I strive to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. I want to show love to everyone regardless of their imperfections. I do not find any joy in condemning people or in the mob mentality. There is no joy in finding out about my precious niece and nephew. And while I have moments of ac extreme anger, right now there's no so much sor sorrow and hurt that I can't even fully process all of it. The last thing I want to do is perpetuate more hate. There is already too much of that in this world. I am praying for healing for all of those who knew and loved Tai Tai and JJ, even those who didn't know them but have been hurt by this news. I pray for healing for all who need it, especially those who choose to lash out in anger over this. I pray for them, especially as I know when you are in pain from your own life circumstances, it is easy to act out in anger. I am trying my best not to do that. It is going to take time to work through all of these emotions and all of this grief, but I have experienced the healing power of atonement of Jesus Christ in my life many times, and I have great hope and faith that he can heal all those who turn to him for comfort. Tylee and JJ are completely irreplaceable in our family. I have loved them greatly all of their lives. There are no words that can capture this loss. Words are just inadequate. We have dozens of Tylee and JJ stories that we love and share frequently. We had prayed our hearts out for them and hoped with all of our hearts that they were safe. But we sadly have to face this new reality and our family will never ever be the same. Sadly, there is no way to go back and undo what has been done. We can only go forward. As much as we miss them here, I know my beautiful Tai Tai and precious JJ are in a beautiful place with people they love. I'm going to do my best to help what's left of my family to honor Tai Tai and JJ by putting our trust in our Savior Jesus Christ, by trying to show an abundance of love and kindness and look into the helping of victims of abuse, children, and children suffering from chronic illnesses and children on the autism spectrum. Love you forever, Tylee and JJ. Okay, so here's my take on it. I find it rather interesting that she's calling her Ty Ty and as like a pet name, as if she was like super, super close, but where was she and where, why was she not worried about her Ty Ty when everybody was looking for her? Why didn't she call a wel welfare check? Why did she give Kay Woodcock a hard time? What I found interesting was that she's said during that interview that her and her mom had talked to JJ on the phone back in October, which we know obviously now that that's a lie because it doesn't cooperate because we already know that he was gone by that time. She had also claimed before that Kay was sending her threatening text messages and things like that, but then in the letter she thanks Kay Woodcock for sending out the welfare checks for JJ and Hailey. So it just doesn't make sense to me why during that time would she 
lie and say that Kay sending her harassing messages and things like that when she has no text anything to prove it but then in the letter where the public's watching and she's more on display it's like she's putting on a little bit of an act or a show to look like you know poor me kind of have trouble believing that she didn't know about JJ and Tylee and the whole zombie things because she was honestly going around telling anybody who would listen. I mean Charles knew, um, Melody Gibb knew, Melanie's um, spouse at the time knew, her niece knew. So I have a really hard time believing that her sister didn't know. I just feel like definitely a liar. I feel like this whole family and a lot of the people like around Lori and in this cult type of thing they disguise their evilness through their face. They're basically wolves in sheep's clothing in my eyes. Else I want to point out is that every time somebody either tried to get Lori help, tried looking for the kids, she did nothing but bash them. She also bashed Charles. Like I said, she bashed Kay and Larry Woodcock. When she did a memorial for her brother Alex, there was no pictures in the memorial of JJ or Tylee at all whatsoever. So I don't know how you use a pet name, Ty Ty, when you're not worried about finding them. You're not worried about getting them safety. You're not worried about where they are to begin with while they're missing, you're more worried about defending your sister. And I get it, loyalty, family, like you wanna defend them to the fullest, but you could never, I don't know how you could live with yourself and being as holy as you say you are, live with yourself knowing that these kids are missing and that's the way you go about it. it makes no sense to me but so that's my opinions i want to hear your guys opinions i want to know what you guys think tonight dateline 10 o'clock airs with melanie gibbs new interview who knows what she's gonna say i can't even deal with that one she's a little bit crazy hope you guys like this video and i'll see you soon